Hello friends, it's Luke the Gamer Duke. I enjoy playing, dissecting, and talking about video games. Today in Diablo 2 Resurrected, I want to talk skills. The skills that kills. We all know about the level 24 and 30 skills that are built to absolutely destroy. What about the skills before? Some can be useless as primary skills on your way to level 30, but others not so much. These are my picks for each character's best early level skills that scale great later game. First off, before we begin, in referencing early skills, I mean early skills. I'm talking level 1 and level 6 unlocks here. Some of these could be considered meta, some off meta. But in all cases, I tried to highlight skills that can be used lucratively with every build on your journey through normal and nightmare into hell mode, where respecting to a meta build is essentially required. Alright, let's get into it. The Druid. The Druid has two primary skill paths, which are basically mutually exclusive, in that you cannot cast elemental skills while shapeshift, and if shapeshifting, you will likely always be in your shifted form. But both paths can still work with summoning. Being a caster or shifter, something that always helps is extra life. So we're going Oak Sage. It adds a percent life aura effect to your entire party, so even if you're not in the heat of battle, your zoo, and more importantly your mercenary, are, which will increase their survivability greatly. Your first point adds 30% life, and each consecutive point will add 5%. 15 points will get you to plus 100% life, and full investment will put you at 125%. And because it is a growing percentage, Oak Sage scales great for your entire party at higher levels. The Sorceress. Unless you're going meta from the jump, the Sorceress can be a bit tough for early skill investing since several of her early skills are basically nullified by her later skills. But one stands out among the others in effectiveness, and that is Static Field. It releases a radius of Static Shock that immediately nukes 25% of enemies' remaining health. I imagine you can see how this is helpful, particularly in boss battles. A couple good perks about Static Field is the mana cost remains the same as you add skill points, and the radius leaps up in alternating increments of 0.7 and 0.6 yards per level, which is pretty good. Since it always does 25% of remaining health, Static Field scales wonderfully in Nightmare and Hell. It's not best used as a primary skill in dealing with mobs. Any enemy with higher life will absolutely melt when hit with half a dozen of these. The Amazon. Similar to the Sorceress, the Amazon was a bit tough since most of her early skills are again nullified by the time her later skills come into play. But unless you're going meta from the gate, you're likely placing points into passive and magic. And since you have to stand still to attack regardless, dodge can come in handy, which grants the chance to dodge enemy attacks while standing or attacking. It starts at 18%, then jumps to 25% with just a second point. You won't need many more after two though, since diminishing returns set in pretty quickly. I'll make an exception and extend this to a void as well, since a few points here grant the chance for missiles to miss you while standing or attacking, and any added chance for enemies to not hit you is usually a plus. The Assassin. The Assassin has several ways to deal out damage, whether by traps, melee, or using shadow skills. But regardless of your playstyle, Burst of Speed will assist greatly in all of them. Burst of Speed increases run, walk, and attack speed. This helps tremendously in melee since some of the best guitar type weapons have very slow attack speed. And when casting traps, there's no such thing as being too quick on the move. Burst of Speed starts at 22% attack, 23% run, and lasts 2 minutes. All of these are increased with additional skill points, but the mana cost at 10 remains the same, which is always a good bonus. After 5 points, diminishing returns set in with only 2% gains, eventually needing 2 points for just a 1% gain. But 4 or 5 points is really all you need here. A 30-40% to 40 increase in run and attack speed will be incredibly noticeable. Run and attack speed are bonuses every character searches for, and the assassin can access both at level 6. The Paladin. Whether you're attacking or casting, most every Paladin build, meta or not, will include Holy Bolt. Which, in terms of damage, I would argue is one of the best scaled skills in the game. It is a great early casting skill that not only passes through enemies, dealing damage to everyone it hits, but also heals allies in the same shot. Granted, Holy Bolt only damages demons and undead, but 75% of the enemies in the game are as such anyway. Holy Bolt is super cheap to cast, resulting in its ability to essentially be fired off constantly. 
Even at full investment, it'll only cost you 3.2 mana per shot. The one caveat here though is the damage by itself begins to fall off going into Nightmare, doing only 196 to 220 damage at level 20. Enter Fist of Heaven Scaling. The synergy of Fist adds a whopping 50% damage per level to Holy Bolt, boosting Holy Bolt's damage dramatically. Just one point in the Fist jumps Bolt's damage by 100. Five points gets it to over 700, and full Fist investment makes Bolt do nearly 2500 damage. Need I say more? The Necromancer. Whether it's a poison, bone, or summoning necro, there's one skill you should never sleep on, and that is Corpse Explosion. Corpse Explosion is straight up sick, and is actually one of my favorite ways to take out mobs. It functions just as the name suggests, it explodes enemy corpses, always doing 70 to 120% of the corpse's life to other enemies in its radius. Its effective radius starts at only 2.7 yards, which is pretty shallow, and its increments are only in 0.3 and 0.4, but it is by far one of the best skills the Necromancer has. And since the damage is based off the enemy, by default it scales like a champ. Mobs of all shapes and sizes completely melt when a few of these pop off. Granted, you have to kill an enemy to activate it, but once one falls, they all fall. Its start cost at 15 might be a bit pricey at lower levels, but it only increases by one per level, leading its cost to diminish the more mana you gain over time. Corpse Explosion is where it's at for any Necro build. The Barbarian. The Barbarian is my most played character, and oddly enough, the one I had to think on the most. And I'm going in a direction you might not expect, or maybe you will. Masteries and combat skills are highly dependent on your build, but war cries are used in every build. And we're going with Howl. Being the barb is all life and melee, unless you're a thrower and adding dexterity too. The last thing you want to have happen is to be rushed or surrounded by a tougher mob in tighter areas, forcing you to have to fight your way out or escape by either leaping or whirlwinding, likely taking damage along the way. Enter Howl. Howl sends enemies running in fear and will very much save your ass in a multitude of scenarios early and later on. It starts at a 3 yard radius and sends enemies running for 3 seconds, which doesn't seem like much, but the radius increments are 0.6 and 0.7 per level which add up quickly, and each point adds a full second of flee time. With every couple seconds during heavy battle feeling like a lifetime, getting enemies to flee for 6 or 8 seconds is majorly beneficial in sticky situations, allowing you to take advantage of one-on-one -on -one engagements instead of one-on-20. So to summarize my picks for each character's best early skill, we have... The Druid with Oak Sage for added percent life. Sorceress of Static Shock's ability to melt bosses. Amazon with Avoid and or Dodge to avoid or dodge. Assassin with Burst of Speed to increase speed all around. Paladin with Holy Bolt for massive scalable damage. Necromancer with Corpse Explosion for again massive scalable damage and the Barbarian with Howl's ability to clear the area. And feel free to let me know your thoughts in the comments. Do you agree with these selections? And why or why not? And if not, what early skills do you go for instead, if any at all? If you enjoyed this short analysis, consider hitting that like button. And remember to subscribe for more fun Diablo ARPG and other gameplay analytics. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Adios.